Hi everyone and welcome back to my series on how to make an action RPG in Godot 4. In this episode we will take a first look at how we can handle player and enemy collisions. I will show you two ways to register these collisions. First between two body nodes and later using area 2D nodes. And on our way to the last solution we will have to make some changes to how our slime is animated. Now let's get started. First. Let's add a collision shape to the slime enemy. I'm using a capsule shape and turning it 90 degrees to make it fit better. Ok, but now I can see that I must have made a small error earlier, since the collision shape should be drawn on top here. I accidentally set the C index to 1 for the animated sprite, but it should actually be 0 here. And then the C index for the root node should be set to 1, to make sure that it still y sorts correctly with the tile map. Now that the collision shape is drawn on top of the sprite, it's also a bit easier to go through the frames of the animated sprite to see if the collision shape fits it properly. The shape doesn't need to cover the entire sprite, just the part that should collide with the environment. If we test our game now, we can see that the player is indeed colliding with the enemy. We can then handle what happens when they collide from the player script. Here I create a new function to handle this collision. The collision we have now is between two character body 2Ds that can limit each other's movement and occurs after the player is moved using the move and slide function. Body collisions after using the move and collide function is handled slightly different. Ok, so we can use the get slide collision count to get the number of collisions that occurred when we moved the player. For each occurrence, we then get the collision info using the get slide collision function. And then we get the collider of the collision using the get collider function. This can then be used to handle what happens based on what the collider is. But here I'm just adding a print debug and use it to print the name of the collider. And then finally we're calling the new handle collision function from the physics process function right after we move the player using the move and slide function. Before we test again, I'm just making the debug and output window a bit larger to make it easier to see what we print out. When we test the game, we can now see that the code works because the name of the slimes are printed in the output when we collide with them. However, we can also see that something looks a bit off sometimes. The slimes and players can overlap with no collision in some cases. This happens because our collision shapes are only covering the bottom of our characters. We could make the shapes cover the whole player, for instance, but then we wouldn't be able to walk in front of trees and other things. So this type of collision maybe isn't the best way to handle player and enemy interaction for our game. But if we were making a type of RPG where the collision shapes would match the whole sprite, then this would be sufficient. But now let's take a look at another way of handling this interaction that might fit this game better. At the moment the player can push the slime around and the slime can kind of block the player. But I think that this doesn't really work like this for our game, so let's change that first. To fix this, we need to change the collision layer and mask for our characters. The player is currently on layer 1 and looks for things in layer 1. This is fine for now. We can also change the layer names by clicking on the three dots to the right. I'm calling layer 1 player and layer 2 enemy. Now let's go to the slime scene and move it to layer 2. And for now the mask should also just be 2. Finally, if we want our enemies to also y sort with the tile map, we need to make sure that they are children of the tile map. And in the tile maps physics layers properties, we set both layer and mask to be both 1 and 2. 
Okay, so we've decided against using the character body's collision shapes for the player and enemy interaction. Instead, we will be adding a hurt box to the player and a hit box to the enemy. These will be made using Area 2D nodes. So let's start by adding one of those to our player and rename it hurt box. The Area 2D node needs a collision shape to work. So let's add one of those to the hurt box. What shape to use really just depends on what your player looks like and what you're going for. You can use a rectangle shape like this, or maybe a capsule shape like this. Once you're done with creating the shape, click on the new hurt box, find the collision properties, and set the mask to include layer 2 as well. We need this to make it interact with the enemy's hitboxes later on. Now let's go to the slime scene and also add an area 2D with a collision shape here. I'm using a capsule shape and rotating it 90 degrees. Mm, okay, so now we have encountered a new problem. The slime animation moves up and down, so it's difficult to create one shape that covers it at all time, without covering too much some of the time. One way to fix this problem is to animate the hitbox so it follows the sprite. This is where an animation player becomes handy. However, when we created the slime scene, it seemed that the best solution for animating was using an animated sprite. But now we need to make a change and use a normal sprite and an animation player instead. Changes like this isn't necessarily bad, actually. It doesn't mean we've done anything wrong previously. Making small changes like this is actually normal and expected in software engineering, where we often rewrite code as the project moves forward and we get a better understanding of the problem. Okay, so let's add an animation player to our slime scene, remove the animated sprite, and add a regular sprite instead. Set the texture on the sprite, and set the H and V frames correctly. And move the sprite up just over the center of the scene. How to do all this is also covered in episode 3, where we animated our player. We now create the animations almost like we animated our player. Select the animation player, create a new animation and call it walk down. I set the snap to 0.2 and then add the slimes walk down frames just like we did for our player in episode 3. Remember to set the animation length to 0.8 and enable looping. Okay. Now that we have our basic animation, it's time to animate the hitbox. But first, make sure that the Area 2D node is lower than the sprite node in the scene tree. This will draw it on top of the sprite and make it much easier to animate properly. Now click on the timeline in the animation menu right where the first frame begins. You can zoom the timeline in and out down right here. We animate the Area 2D node's collision shape by first making sure it is selected in the scene tree and then lock properties to the frames with the key buttons. For this animation, we need to lock both the position and the scale. Ok, now go to the next frame. Here we move the collision shape up and then I also think we should make it a bit taller here. We can't do this the way we would normally change the shape, since these points we use to change it can't be locked in an animation. Instead, we can scale it. First, we click here to make sure we can scale each axis independently. And then we can use these scales to make the shape fit the sprite better. Note that X and Y is switched here because the shape is turned 90 degrees. Now, I think the shape is also a bit too wide. 
So I'm setting the Y scale to 0.9, and then I lock both the scale and the position to the frame. I edit and lock the collision shape the same way for the last two frames. For frame 3, I move the shape a bit up, and for frame 4, I move it back down and reset the scale. When we play the animation, we can see that the shape now moves up and down with the sprite but it doesn't seem to match correctly in between the frames. This is because the values of the properties we locked are currently changed continuously by the animation player. However, we want it to be discrete. We can change this down here for both position and scale. And now I think the animation looks a lot better. We create the next three walk animations the same way we did for our player in episode 3. We duplicate the current animation and then change the sprite frames. But for each frame, we now also look at how the collision shape looks and then change and lock the position and scale to make it fit the sprite as good as possible. I encourage you to experiment with all this, not just now, but also later as the game progresses. How should the hurt box behave in your game? To use the new animation, we only need to make a small change to the slime script. Our animations variable should now be set to our new animation player instead of the old animated sprite. And now I see one tiny bug again. The slime moving left and right here is only playing the walk up animation. When we first created the slime, it was only moving up and down, so I must have forgotten to enable the left and right animations in the script. The fastest way to fix this right now is to just go to the player script, copy the update animation function, and replace the slimes update animation function with this. And now all the slimes are moving correctly. Before I forget, let's also rename the slimes area 2D so we won't forget later that it's a hitbox. The last thing we will look at in this episode is how to register collisions between the slimes hitbox and the player's hurtbox. Let's go to the player scene and select the hurt box. Then go to the node menu, right click on the area entered signal and click connect. For now, let's just use the default settings here and click connect. Okay, so now this function will be called whenever an area is entering the collision shape of the player's hurt box. We will do more things here in later episodes, but for now, Let's check if the area's name is hitbox and print the name of the entering area's parent if it is. When we test again, we can see that the slime's name is printed when it starts to overlap with the player. We can use this setup later to decrease the player's health, make it blink or have other kinds of reactions to touching the slime. Well, I think this episode is getting a bit long now, so I will just end it here. Next time we will give the player health and create our first GUI to visualize the health. Bye!